Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, CRM Qualification or Degree in Marketing. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. The presentation will last for approximately 30 minutes, with some time at the end for questions. You have the opportunity to submit these questions to today's presenter by typing them into the questions pane of the control panel. You can send in these questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them in the Q&A at the end of today's presentation. I'd now like to introduce Martin Hutchins, who will be running today's presentation. Over to you, Martin. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're all well. Um, yes, my name is Martin Hutchins, and uh, I'm going to try and talk you through the difference between the CIM qualification and a degree in marketing. Um, I'm currently the Managing Director of one of the CIM accredited study centres, which we've been around for about 14 years, but I'm also a tutor on the CIM programme, and I've taught at all levels, and also studied myself um, some years ago, right up to postgraduate diploma level. So hopefully I've got a reasonably good insight into, into the sorts of things that you are going to be asking about. Before we start, what I'd like to do is just to get a feel for the people that are online. So we've got a few questions that we're going to ask you. So the first question is, um, are you currently studying for uh, a CLM qualification at the moment? Okay, so far we have about um, 20, oh, about half of the people have replied so far, and it's about a 50-50 response, not quite 50-50. Anybody else want to click reply first? Okay, so we've got, we've got about uh, two-thirds of you have replied now, and so far it's about half of you are saying that you're not and just under half are saying that you are currently studying. So be interested to know what sorts of questions those of you which are studying um, are going to be asking you later on. Please feel free, by the way, to, uh, to answer questions as I go through, ask questions as I go through. Okay, so the second question that um, I'd like to know, if you're not studying, are you thinking of actually starting to study for ACIM qualification at any level? Again, if you could put your answers into the survey, please. So interestingly, of the people that are currently studying, there's 38 that, that currently are, and we've had about 31 of those people saying that they are thinking about it, which is good. Okay, so final question then, please. Uh, sorry, penultimate question. Do you currently have a degree at the moment? So are you looking to move up from a degree to a CIM qualification? If you wouldn't mind putting your answers into the... Uh, into the response form. So only one person so far has said they've got a degree. Ah, there we go. It's catching up now. So 30 people? Wow, okay. Well, that's very interesting. So what that shows me is there's quite a lot of people that already have a degree but are interested in progressing up to a CIM qualification as opposed to comparing the CIM qualification against a degree as one of the options. Okay, um, and the final question, just to see whether or not those of you that are currently um, look with a degree or, or not, are, are you currently working in marketing? If you could let me know if you are in a marketing role. So this is to see whether or not you're looking to make the choice between a degree or a qualification to get into marketing. That's good. So, so far, everybody that's answered us says they're working in marketing. Okay, just a few of you aren't, but the majority of you are. That's excellent. Well, that's telling me then is that the 
talk that I'm going to do about the various um, modules and levels would be relevant to those people that um, understand the the terms that we're going to use in marketing. Right, okay, thank you very much for the, the responses. So let's just give you a, a brief overview of the sorts of things that we're going to cover. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the levels and touch on each of the modules at the levels and also talk about who it would be relevant to um, in terms of a, a job function as well as a, an aspirational career. Then we're going to move on to the nub of the, the, the webinar really, which is what is um, a qualification from the CIM versus a degree in marketing. And then hopefully those of you that aren't currently studying, I've got a few extra little tips for you which will help you make some choices in terms of how you progress. So we'll talk about the range of study methods that are available, we'll talk about the level that you should start at, and give you an idea as to how long it's going to take for you to gain the qualification. And then finally, if you, are, if you haven't yet chosen which study centre to go to, I've got a few questions that you could possibly um, ask the study centre to make sure you make the right choice for yourself. Okay, so let us start with the qualifications. There's currently four levels for the CM qualification. There's the foundation certificate, which is a level three qualification. That tends to be aimed at people that are looking to get into marketing or undertake a part-time marketing role. So for example, you might be a PA or you might be somebody in sales that just wishes to get a very high level understanding of the, um, the practicalities of marketing. So level three really is just a taster. Consists of only two modules. One module is marketing principles, which is mandatory, and then the other module is an, an option between customer communications, which is, I suppose you would call that more of an offline type of qualification, and the digital essentials for those people that want to focus more on the digital. Marketing principles is taken um, as an exam and the elective are both assignments or projects which are based on your organisation. The level four, which is for people that are new to marketing but have got a bit of understanding of business or they work in a, currently in a marketing role. Um, typically, I would say that the majority of people that start at this level because it gives you a very good understanding of marketing. For example, one of the modules that you take is marketing, it's called marketing itself, and it covers the whole gambit of, of the marketing process. The other mandatory unit that you would also take at this level is integrated communications, which focuses on both on and offline communications to a range of stakeholders. As the um, level three had some electives, so does the level four. So you again, you have an option between customer experience, which is more of an offline approach, to the digital version, um, which is uh, obviously tailored to those people that wish to hone their skills in digital marketing. Again, one exam, which will be the marketing, and then the other th two, um, both the mandatory and your elective, are assessed through an assignment. Okay, level six, the diploma, is for people that have been in marketing for a while, and um, typically they've got a couple of years of experience in marketing, or they've gained the previous level four. There are, again, three modules to take in at this level. Two are mandatory and one is an elective. Strategic marketing, which is an exam. Mastering metrics, which is all about measuring the performance of marketing, which is a project. And then an option, both of which are assessed through assignment, either digital um, strategy, again, or driving innovation. Overall, the new marketing leadership program, level seven. This is a much higher, much more strategic qualification and we're actually quite excited about the, the new modules which have been developed for this new marketing leadership program. Entry onto this would be a number of years experience in marketing on a directoral position um, or the level six, um, but you, you, know, you should be aware that this is quite a, I wouldn't say challenging, quite an interesting um, level because it's, you're looking really at driving forward your business. All of these units will all, all be assessed through work-based assignments. So there are actually no exams at the new marketing leadership level seven. Okay. So the main question today is, should I to a CIM qualification or should I take a degree? Well, I think the, the, the first answer and the biggest answer must be the global recognition of the qualification. There is no 
qualification available which is respected throughout the world as much as the, as the CIM levels. And I think that must be the driving force for anybody who wishes to gain access to positions perhaps overseas or in organisations that have international exposure. Let's talk about some of the benefits that you would get as a holder of the CIM. First of all, if you ever look at the vacancies that are advertised by uh, many recruitment companies and also organisations wishing to recruit a marketer, very often they state that the CIM qualification is required. And indeed it's recognised by 95% of employees in the UK and many worldwide. So even if the advert doesn't state it, the employer will um, be quite receptive to the fact that you have gained this qualification. It shows two things really to them. It shows one, that you've got the capacity to learn the theory and apply the theory, which I'll move on to later on. But secondly, that you've taken the time and the trouble to focus on something which is a much more practical endorsement of your capab capabilities. Those people that are already employed and are looking to embark on a CIM qualification will certainly enhance their skills and certainly enhance their knowledge around the theories that are available that they can apply. And I have heard many of our past students talk about the fact that they've gained promotion not long after they've completed their studies or a level of their studies. So it's not only a ticket to get into a new company, it's also an, op an opportunity for you to progress within your existing business. The CIM themselves have done quite a lot of research into the benefits in terms of salary, and they have gathered facts which demonstrate that on average people earn 10% more as a salary than those people that don't have the qualification. So that's quite a, a financial benefit for you as well. So let me talk a bit about the, the sort of focus of study, really. Um, if you go to university, you will, because of the, the limited exposure that you have to an existing organisation, you will end up um, focusing very much on the theory. I'm not to say that there won't be any case studies, but you'll be very much on the theory and applying that theory in a lecture slash work group environment. So the focus, I would say, is going to be 70 to 80 percent theory. You know, I can't give you the exact figure, but it's mainly on the books and the, the writers in, in marketing. It's very different when you study for a qualification um, from what with one of the study centres offering the CIM. All of the theory, by its very nature, in the way that it's taught, has to be applied to real, real world situations. And indeed, any work that you do during the, the workshops will always be applied and quite often they're applied towards your assessment as well. So let me give you an example. If somebody were taking a workshop um, through with, with one of our trainers, probably about 30% of the time in that workshop would be spent talking about the concepts and the theories. The other 70% would then be group activities focused around each of the assignment questions or the tasks which enable the assignments to be written. That assignment is always on a business challenge or a marketing challenge. So it's very much focused on, on the job and applying what you're learning. I thought I'd have a look around to see whether I could find some endorsements of the qualification. And I found quite an interesting one from a lady called Liz Hopkins, who's the director of Michael Page. Some of you will have come across Michael Page. They're one of the leading marketing recruitment companies in the UK. And uh, Liz was um, quite uh, positive about the CIM. She said, it seems that the CIM qualification is held in high regard with people. And the ultimate summation seems to be that work experience is extremely important to clients, but a solid qualification to back this up adds weight to any job application. So in essence, what Liz is saying there is, Yes, work experience is good and lots of CVs, no doubt, that, that they receive um, talk about the experience that people have in marketing, but they need to find a way to sift through the candidates that they put forward for positions. And it appears from this that this CIM qualification is the one of the reasons that they would pass on certain CVs.
Okay, let's talk about the syllabus. The syllabus in a degree has to be put forward to the various bodies that award that degree. And any of you that have been in university will know that the, the wheels of change move quite slowly in the university environment, and therefore that degree syllabus is unlikely to be changed very rapidly. On the other hand, when it comes to the CIM qualification, they are continuously under review. Every two to three years, there is actually a major review, quite often of some of the levels, and they have to be kept up to date because of the employer focus that the syllabuses take into account. So for example, the, the level seven, which is just about launched, there was an extensive consultation that took place with a number of key employers in the UK, and they actually said what they wanted people to learn if they were to gain this qualification. So they had a, a very big voice in the structure of the syllabus. The other levels, especially the digital, for example, as you're aware, it moves very fast. The digital structure is, is always being reviewed. And to a certain extent, even the study centers, when they deliver them, they're able to adapt the content to keep up with contemporary situations. So I would certainly argue that um, the CIM keep abreast of the changes much better than a degree could possibly do. Let's talk about timescales. A normal degree would take you around three years, depending on the, the type of degree that you do, but typically they're about three years, and that would be a full-time attendance. The certificate in marketing, as I said, that is the, um, the, the, the usual start point, or possibly the level six, which is the diploma. The um, average person would take about one year to complete any one of those levels. So one year of part-time study compared to three years of full-time study, and what I would what I've said earlier is probably a, a better recognised achievement. The other question that um, people often ask us is, when can I start? You know, we get phone calls all the time. You know, when is your next entry date? Well, it depends on where you study. It depends on, on how you're going to study. But usually, with a degree, you're stuck to the academic calendar, which starts around September, October, and then if you don't hit that date, then you would move on to the, the following year. Fortunately, most study centers nowadays have um, either a roll-on, roll-off approach, or certainly they take enrollments at least every three months. As I say, some you can find, especially if you're doing distance learning, you can sign up and start studying the day that you um, enroll. So you're much more flexible in terms of your start date. Whilst I'm on the subject of flexibility, you can also pick and choose with many study centers the module that you're going to take at any one time. So you can start on the next upcoming unit that they're teaching and then roll on to the remainder to complete that level of study. Unfortunately, it's very rare to get that level of flexibility from a degree. Let's talk about the things that uh, make your business card look good. You um, have the opportunity to get designatory letters after your name. So you can obviously get DIPEM if you complete the diploma, and if you um, achieve various statuses of membership, they've got a membership ranging from affiliate right up to fellow. And the fellows are um, held in reasonably high esteem, I have to say, and the, the fact that the um, status is only awarded to a, a small number of people, it shows that it's something worth going, to, going for. I don't want to say that a degree is bad. You know, some people, they find the academic rigor of taking a degree is good for them. It, it obviously changes people as, as individuals when you go through the, the university environment, and it helps people to mature. Some people, therefore, may wish to consider taking the, a degree first, or alternatively, doing the CIM qualification first, and then moving on to a, degree, a master's degree after. I know of a couple of universities which will give exemptions and direct access onto a master's degree once they've achieved their diploma in marketing from the CIM. Let's also look at some of the other benefits that you get as a member of the CIM. The sorts of benefits that, uh, as a, a student at a university, you wouldn't really expect to get. Um, obviously, the, the CIM is the largest and leading marketing body for, throughout the world, and as a membership organization, 
there's over 30,000 members. So they need to give a very um, good package of benefits to retain that membership, apart from the fact that the uh, association with the CIM as a, as a member is good for you as well. So we've got things like um, free access to online materials via the MyCIM portal. Lots of reports, journals, business publications and books are there for access once you become a member. There is lots of information on um, things like marketing theories which are happening or even some case studies. Well. Lots of webinars take place either live or on demand. Roughly once a month there's one of those. You will all receive a CIM magazine which is packed full of um, good stories and features. That's the Catalyst magazine. That's once a month. There's various membership groups as well, set to interest groups. So there's one, for example, for the tourism industry. There's some for the finance industry. And there's also regional network groups as well, which you can go along to and meet fellow marketers and discuss some of the issues that you're facing, as well as listen to some very, very good presentations that local speakers make. There's a library that you are allowed to borrow books from. Um, and also a bookstore as well, which the CIM operate, where you can buy some of the latest titles which have been published. One of the great events that uh, we all get to go to annually is the Marketing Excellence Awards. Nominations are put forward uh, a few months in advance. They're judged by a, a very um, high esteemed um, group of people, and the companies and individuals that win them get to go up on stage and receive their award from some um, well-known celebrities. Lots of best practice guides and finally something which I think uh, most people expect now is a hotline and a legal advice centre as well from the CIM. So I think you'll agree that um, if you go through the qualification route, not only do you get the qualification, you get quite a large bundle of benefits as well. I think one of the most compelling reasons why people would start on a qualification rather than take time out and go to degree is the fact that you can earn a salary at the same time as learning your, uh, your trade, your qualification. Um, that in itself I think is very compelling. But let's, let's look at the typical fees. Usually a degree will cost you, um, in the UK certainly, around about £9,000 a year. So you're looking to expend or invest, should I say, £27,000 of your of your money, albeit on possibly a student loan, but over a three year period that's a substantial amount of money. If we compare that to a qualification, and this does depend on where you study and who you choose to study with, for example um, if you're looking to do a distance learning course you will find that the, the rates that are mentioned here are a lot you know, are on the low end of the scale, and if you look to do an, a high level intensive approach then you would be paying um, the, the larger amounts of money. But typically for the foundation, between 1,000 and 1,500 pounds. For the certificate, which is the most common entry point, as I said earlier, between 1,500 and 2,500 pounds. The diploma, the level six, 1,600 to 2,008. And then the new marketing leadership program, as I said, that is, is um, the, the, the new qualification which is aimed at the strategic managers between five and a half and seven thousand pounds. There's actually only six study centres that can offer that at the moment. Let's move on to how many hours. There's a, a, a very common question that we get when people telephone us or email us. How long will it take and how much time do I need to commit? Well, as I said earlier, a degree about three years. Typically a CIM level, one of the levels, so the certificate or the diploma, is going to take you around nine months to a year to complete. That's assuming that you pass the assessment first time, and that's assuming that you put in around about 45 to 60 hours of personal time outside of any workshop that you do. So you can usually do sort of three to five hours per week of personal study. So you can see very much quicker to achieve the, the status. Okay, so what options have you got to, to take the CIM qualification? These tend to change regionally. Some organisations or some study centres um, have stopped doing evening classes. Um, the reason for that, I think, is the efficiency that uh, blended approaches now offer. But you may find somebody that will offer you an evening class. 
In my personal opinion, I think that evening classes um, are becoming slightly outdated. If you think about it, you would usually do one module in about 12 evening classes, which would be 12 three-hour sessions. And one of the downsides of that is that every week that you come back, you've got to revise what you did the previous week to, to bring yourself up to speed. And you've got tea breaks and downtime. And actually, the effective time during an evening class is usually only about an hour to an hour and a half of a three-hour session. So it's much better to do um, an intensive one or two day workshop per module. Um, that way everything is tied together and I find that they work a lot more efficiently. And also the delegates that we, that we train, certainly the feedback we get anyway, is that it's, uh, they enjoy it much more as well, the, the business environment. You might find a study centre that will offer you webinars um, similar to this one, whether they be visual or whether they be just purely um, recorded audio webinars. There are still one or two organisations which offer the good old-fashioned paper-based distance learning approach with no online access. But I think nowadays anybody that offers a distance learning approach primarily will offer it through an e-learning system, something that um, offers both um, static electronic con content such as PDFs and slides as well as SCORM interactive packages as well. I think that if you are serious about uh, taking a qualification, however, the blended approach is probably the way to go. A mixture of personal study, working on your assignments and reviewing the content, coupled with some face-to-face -face workshops where you are allowed to interact with colleagues and interact with the, the, the trainer and make sure that you get the, the, the most exciting and, in, and, and um, entertaining, I would say, um, experience. Okay, so I thought, well, maybe I could help you choose your study center and give you a few questions that would be pertinent. So the first one that you would, I think you should ask is how many classes per module? How many classes or how much time face-to-face -face with my tutor, lecturer, or trainer will I get per module? However, a word of, a word of caution here, just because you get more hours, it does not mean that you get better quality. So um, just bear in mind that it's, it's, the, it's the number of sessions um, that, that potentially give you lots of hours, but sometimes organizations that do a one or a two day workshop will, uh, will give you a much more intensive but more fulfilling experience. Second thing you want to ask is who's gonna be the, the teacher? Are they somebody who is employed as a lecturer and has to um, double up on multiple subjects? or are they a marketing specialist? I would certainly advocate bearing in mind that the qualification assessments are all practical in their nature, that you look for trainers who either work in business or have spent a long time in marketing as part of their career. I think that's a very important factor in the success rate of candidates taking the assessments in the fact they've been taught by somebody who can apply the knowledge. In the same vein, you want to know who's going to be looking after you once you leave the classroom. Do you get a support tutor to ask questions? Do you get a support tutor to send in your draft assignments to? The, um, the success rate on taking assessments and assignments we find is it's up at the 90%, 95% if somebody sends in a draft and it's reviewed by a tutor. If, if it's not reviewed, you're looking at around about a 50% success rate on passing the assignment. So the support from the tutor outside of the workshop is, is critical, I think, in my opinion. Another question we ask often is, what happens if I fail? Well, fortunately, there's, there's nothing too detrimental. You can just retake that module. Um, unfortunately, it means that you have to pay the fee again to the, to the CI and for it to be marked again, as you would expect, but there is no maximum number of assessment entries that you can make as long as the syllabus is still current. And the last question I think that you should ask is what additional resources will I be provided? You might be provided with textbooks, you might be provided with printouts of slides, you might be provided with study guides, you might be provided with an online portal where you can have additional electronic resources. But the wraparound supply of material that you can use as part of your research, I think is a great benefit to many students. You should also look to see whether that's included in your price or not. Some people will charge a lower price for um, delivering the course to you, 
but all of the additional resources that you will actually need, you need to purchase yourself. At the same time, you should also check about your CIM assessment fees as to whether they're bundled in your price as well. Some study centres will expect you to pay for those yourself, others will cover the cost of them as part of your membership fee. So what do I do next? Let's have a look at the final stages for you. I think you should decide on your entry level, whether you're going to be a level 3, level 4, level 6 or level 7. And one way that you can assess that is to take the online diagnostic test. And I've put the, the web address on there. I think the next thing that you should do is to develop your list of questions to make sure that you get the right study centre for you that suits both your lifestyle, your budget and also what you hope to get out of it. You can look on the CIM website and find a, a list of study centres that are available to you. Then you would sign up with the study centre to enrol onto the workshops and hopefully provided with all of your material and at the appropriate time you then register with the CIM as a member and apply for your assessments. As for the timetable for the modules that you're looking to study. Okay, so that's the end of the, um, the formal presentation. I've got a few questions that have been asked. I'm just going to flick through and see if I can answer some of those live now. Do you give me a second? Okay, so there's, there's a question here from um, Natalie, and Natalie said, I've got an MSc in marketing of five years plus work experience in the sector. Um, what level should I enter at? So you've got five years plus, Natalie. Um, you're on the sort of cusp of actually being relevant for the postgraduate diploma. The question that you have to ask yourself is, do you feel that your practical skills are honed um, or would you benefit from understanding that it's nothing more about the scope of marketing from a practical perspective, bearing in mind that you've done an MSc, which would obviously be a lot more theoretical. So in answer to your question, I think um, I would suggest a diploma. If, however, you've got a lot of senior marketing experience, then the postgraduate diploma would be appropriate to you. Got another question here from somebody who's just finished the digital marketing level seven. What's next? Well, the, the digital marketing would focus more on the online tools, obviously, and it's much more practical and operational in its focus, and therefore you could consider, again, doing the level seven, um, and depending upon your work experience, Carmen, you might also want to look at the postgraduate as well. Somebody, Path Patel, has said he wants to get a distinction. Okay, distinction, we don't actually use the word distinction, we, we use um, grades from uh, A down to E, A, B and C being a pass. If you're looking to get a grade A, which I think is what you're asking, Path, then I would certainly recommend a classroom approach, um, unless your distance learning provider gives you very much one-to-one -one support. Um, but yet the classroom, and making sure, as I said earlier, that you submit your assignments to the to the tutor for review prior to um, prior to completion or prior to formal submission. Okay, there's a rather long one here. I'm just going to read it. Okay, so um, Stephanie, you're asking a question about the comparison between the Ofqual qualification and the Australian qualifications framework. I have to be honest with you, although I know that the CIM is recognised in Australia because I have a colleague um, based there, as far as its formal recognition is concerned um, on the qualifications framework, you would have to take that up with the Australian um, body rather than with uh, somebody from the CIM. Okay, question from Path again. Will my CIM qualification get me a salary pay rise? Well, it depends on your employer. Uh, I, this, this, um, some employees that will, employers will certainly award a, a pay rise. Others, uh, they would expect you to, to stay up to date with your, with your knowledge and skills. Definitely, again, you've asked about this, the syllabus change for the postgraduate diploma. I think I mentioned that earlier at the beginning of my, my webinar. Okay, question here from um, 
I think it's ELIDA. It's saying that is the certificate a degree equivalent of the diploma? The certificate is a level four. A degree is level six. The diploma is level six. So in answer to your question, the diploma is the equivalent to a degree. Okay, question here from Maha. Um, Maha, you said if you have a marketing degree and you're currently working in marketing, where do you recommend you enter a or diploma? The answer to that question is a diploma, the level six diploma. Ah, okay, Eric, you have asked to look at the prices again. I'll open those up whilst I carry on talking, just to give you a feel for the um, pricing. There we go. Do the CRM offer loans? Claire Sweet has asked. Claire, um, they don't offer loans, but uh, what you will find again that some study centres will allow you to apply for a student's loan um, and their courses are recognised by the SFA. So you can actually get a student loan via the um, student route rather than from the CIM. Okay, uh, question here from Evelyn. Evelyn, you've got a computer sciences um, degree and over eight years in marketing. What level should you go for? I would recommend the diploma um, with eight years of marketing and a degree in, in computer sciences rather than the certificate. Although your degree would usually um, allow you entry onto the certificate because you've got so many years of marketing experience, I suggest that you move on to the to the uh, price to, to do the diploma. Okay, question here for uh, from Rob. Rob has asked, which CIM level do you have to have completed and passed before you're eligible to, for a master's degree or university? It will depend on the university. Uh, in my experience, the level six allows you entry onto the master's degree. But one thing I will say to you is that if you're looking to move up between levels within the CIM, so for example, you are partially completed or awaiting results for a level four, you can still move on to the level six, the next level up, as long as you've received passes for two of the units. So you can be undertaking the last unit or awaiting your results for the last unit, but you can still move up to the next level. Got a question here from Paul. Paul has said, I have an advanced certificate in marketing management practice that you did in 2003. Where would it fit in today's program and what would be your next step? Unfortunately, the, um, the advanced certificate um, is not recognized in terms of uh, partial exemptions anymore it, because it was moved, it's been changed twice actually since, since that program. So you would have to start at the diploma. The diploma is the equivalent of what was the advanced certificate. Um, so your next step would be to, to find a center and take the level six diploma. Unfortunately, I think you will have to take all of the units, all three of them, without any exemptions. Okay, I think that Fiona is going to come back on now and, uh, and talk to you and summarise. Um, but thank you very much for your time and I hope that that has been of use to you. So, Fiona. Thank you very much, Martin. Uh, and thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. Once you leave, you will receive a survey on the presentation and we would appreciate it if you would complete that and provide your feedback. You'll also be able to log back onto the system and view the recording of this webinar should you so wish and you will get a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours with a link as well to view the recording. On behalf of Martin and CIM, thank you for joining us today and have a great rest of your day.